fame can be a fickle beast. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 stars who saved their careers. For this list, we're looking at celebrities who saw their stardom wane only to rise again, be it because of a hiatus, issues of mental health, addiction, or simply bad luck. These stars fell off the map, but managed to bounce back in a major way. For the record, stars don't need to currently be on top of the world to be considered. They just need to have made a major comeback in their careers. Number 20. Dave Chappelle In the early mid-aughts, this comedian's career couldn't have been any bigger. He was one of the most recognizable names in stand-up, and his Comedy Central series Chappelle Show was a massive success. If you're just joining us, black people got their reparations checks today, and in short, all hell is broken loose. He'd reportedly been offered a $50 million contract to keep the series going, but the fame seemingly got to Chappelle, specifically the cultural impact of his show. So at the height of his popularity, he abandoned production of season three and went to South Africa. Between 2005 and 2013, his public appearances were sporadic at best. You know, when you're a guy that generates money, yeah. people have a vested interest in controlling it. Yeah. When he finally made his long-awaited return, it could have been a disaster. But he pulled it off with style, winning an Emmy for a now legendary SNL hosting gig and signing a massive deal with Netflix. The article goes on to say I was booed off stage, which is also incorrect. I was booed. I did not leave. Number 19. Betty White what other star of her age can claim comparable popularity with younger demographics? What a day. One sad person after another. Rose, you work at grief counseling. What do you expect, comedians? <laughs> Betty White had a successful career spanning decades, including roles in popular television series such as The Mary Tyler Moore Show and Golden Girls. With time, her roles became not only less high profile, but also fewer and farther between. When most actors would have been happy to retire, however, Betty White began a whole new phase of her career in the late aughts. Oh, man. Come on, man, you've been riding me all day. Mike, you're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. Oh, baby! She appeared in sketches for Craig Ferguson and Jay Leno, but it was a 2009 Snickers campaign that really connected White to a whole new generation. When I was younger, I was so concerned with how my muffin looked. <laughs> but as I got older, I started to think, to heck with it. This is my muffin and I don't care how it looks. <laughs> White hosted SNL at the record-breaking age of 88, establishing herself as a beloved comedic figure anew. Number 18, D'Angelo. Young listeners might not recognize the name, but in the mid-90s, D'Angelo was widely considered the gold standard of R&B, and he's been a major influence on countless musicians in the years since. With his 1995 debut album Brown Sugar, he not only rocked the charts, but instantly became a sex symbol. His 2000 follow-up Voodoo seemingly solidified this reputation. Then he just disappeared. D'Angelo retreated from the public eye to deal with personal issues, including alcoholism. Few artists can return after nearly a decade and a half and still feel relevant, but in 2014, he reclaimed his crown with Black Messiah which was released to universal acclaim and earned him the Grammy for Best R&B Album. Number 17, Kesha. Kesha initially climbed the charts as a party girl, but after essentially being robbed of her voice as both a woman and an artist, she revealed an entirely different side to herself. She exploded onto the pop music scene with a feature on Flo Rida's Right Round before landing hits of her own, including TikTok, Die Young, and Your Love Is My Drug. After going to rehab for bulimia, Kesha's career was brought to a screeching halt in 2014 by a legal battle with producer Dr. Luke, whom Kesha accused of sexual abuse, among other things. Many artists would have given up, but Kesha found alternative ways to perform, and eventually returned in 2017 with the widely celebrated Rainbow, a deeply personal album about empowerment. Number 16, Eminem. There are few musicians who've had a bigger impact on popular music than Eminem. His lyrics terrified parents across America, his personal style inspired countless imitators, and many credit him with having brought hip-hop to middle America. Come on, man, you gotta battle. See, I'm not you, dog. Look at me. Oh, and he starred in a critically acclaimed semi-autobiographical film because, you know, why not? But in the mid-aughts, substance abuse, depression, and the death of his best friend Proof nearly destroyed Eminem. His comeback album Relapse was met with mixed reviews, but he's just kept marching forward, repeatedly reasserting his dominance as both a hitmaker and one of the greatest rappers to ever pick up a mic. 
he's continued to take home Grammys, produce hit singles, and divide critics and fans alike. Number 15, Jason Bateman. Would you care to accompany me on an inspection tour of Old Faithful this weekend? I'd very much enjoy visiting a scenic wonder with a scenic wonder. A former adolescent star that earned roles in shows like Silver Spoons, Jason Bateman went on to star in films like Teen Wolf 2. Oh my god. Oh my god. But as the 90s progressed, the former teen idol's career stalled big time. I would like to call to the stand Franklin Delano Bliss. Getting cast in the acclaimed sitcom Arrested Development in the 21st century changed all that. Bateman demonstrated that his talent had very definitely matured, and he capitalized on the critical attention the show received by going on to garner laughs in huge comedies like Horrible Bosses and lending his voice to Nick Wilde in 2016's Zootopia. Hey, Carrots, you're gonna wake the baby. I gotta get to work. This is important, sir. He's also given his fair share of solid dramatic performances, like his work on the Netflix series Ozark. Number 14, Alec Baldwin. Like many male actors of his generation, Alec Baldwin has let his temper get the better of him to the detriment of his career. Don't you hate it when that happens? Let's go, Baldwin! Wait, wait, wait! Baldwin established his star power in the late 80s and early 90s. Beetlejuice, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, and The Hunt for Red October are just a few of the movies that made him a household name. Admiral, is there a way you could get me on board the Dallas? What the hell for? I think that Captain Mancuso has found the Red October. Then, in 1995, an altercation with a photographer, coupled with various personal issues, caused him to retreat from the limelight, taking lower-profile television roles. With 30 Rock, however, Baldwin essentially reinvented himself, winning over a whole new generation of fans. I don't cook very much. Sure. I got you. New York, third-wave feminist, college-educated, single and pretending to be happy about it, overscheduled, undersexed. You buy any magazine that says healthy body image on the cover? Baldwin has weathered multiple controversies, but with his trademark charisma and sense of humor, he always manages to bounce back. Number 13, Demi Lovato. Do you gonna press play? Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> With her performances in the Camp Rock films and the Disney Channel series Sunny with a Chance, Demi Lovato became a teen icon. But what few people knew was that she'd been struggling with mental health issues for years. With the pressures of fame building, she developed an eating disorder and a drug habit. Demi walks up onto the plane and I turned around and Demi had punched her backup dancer in the face. After punching a dancer on tour and being sent to rehab, Lovato's career seemed over at 18. But she not only returned with new music, she also addressed her struggles publicly, becoming a better role model. She's continued to struggle with addiction and mental health over the years, but in speaking frankly about her journey, she's established herself as an important and hugely influential voice in both regards. Number 12, Winona Ryder. In the late 80s and throughout the 90s, Winona Ryder was everywhere you looked. A woman so lovely and intelligent should not be walking the streets of London without her gentleman. No, you, sir. Are you acquainted with my husband? Beetlejuice, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and Girl Interrupted are just a handful of the high-profile movies in which she starred. Following a shoplifting arrest in 2001, however, she stopped acting. Rumors of prescription pill abuse circulated. Seemingly overnight, she went from one of the biggest pop culture icons of her generation to a distant memory. What'd you do to get this role? He always said you were such a frigid little girl. It turns out she was clinically depressed at the time, and after taking a few years to focus on her personal life, she slowly returned to work. Writers started small with indie movies, but they steadily got bigger. I got off early, and ta-da! Poltergeist. I, I thought I wasn't allowed to see it. I changed my mind. With her Golden Globe-nominated role in Stranger Things, she solidified her status as a comeback queen. Number 11. Drew Barrymore. When she appeared in E.T. the Extraterrestrial, which held the record for highest grossing film of all time for 11 years, Drew Barrymore absolutely stole the show. I taught him how to talk now, he can talk now. The incredibly adorable young actress went on to star in several other films until adolescence and drug addiction sidelined her career. In the early 90s, she reminded the world how talented she was when she earned her second Golden Globe nomination for Gun Crazy and followed that up as teenage mistress Amy Fisher. You want me to blow on you too? That'd make you happy. New opportunities then opened up for her, with her Scream cameo leading the way. What do you want? To see what your insides look like. 
with hits like The Wedding Singer and Charlie's Angels, Barrymore became a huge star once again and followed these up with more TV show and movie appearances. And that's kicking your ass. Number 10, Ellen DeGeneres. It's a good job. I like being a comedian. The only bad thing about the job is that I have to fly everywhere I go uh, because, well, because you won't come to me. Actually, that's why. In the 90s, stand-up comedian Ellen DeGeneres tried her hand as the lead in a sitcom and found herself in a big hit. Look, if you could just tell me if it's gonna be a while, I could wait right over the <laughs> there. Next! She achieved even greater fame when both she and the character she played came out as gay. For God's sake, Ellen, tell him you're gay! <laughs> but a backlash soon developed, and her popularity faded. In 2003, though, she had a double whammy. She delighted audiences as the voice of Dory in the huge hit Finding Nemo. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. And simultaneously earned a devoted following as the host of her own talk show. I'm so pleased and so personally privileged to be able to officially dedicate stage one, which forevermore will be now known as the Ellen stage. <laughs> Having hosted the Oscars, served as a cover girl, and contributed to numerous causes. Ellen is a bigger star than ever, though it is worth noting that in 2020, she has come under fire for a, quote, toxic work environment on her show. Number 9. Natasha Lyonne During its heyday, American Pie made huge stars of its ensemble cast. Don't worry, you'll get her back soon enough. You think so? Sure, she likes you. Soon thereafter, Natasha Lyonne was appearing in everything from Kate and Leopold to Blade Trinity. We need a new tactic. Like what? A biological weapon. Unfortunately, as addiction took the wheel, her career declined in tandem with her health. In 2005, after a series of legal issues, she was hospitalized with a collapsed lung, a heart infection, hepatitis C, and heroin addiction. Few actors ever come back from such an extreme low. But Leone not only got healthy and returned to acting, she has since delivered her best work to date. You know what? I, I don't believe in dictating the boundaries of a sentient being's existence. I, for you, it's safety. For me and oatmeal, it's a prison. She was an absolute scene stealer as Nikki Nichols in Orange is the New Black. But Russian Doll, which she co-created, co-wrote, and stars in, remains the crowning jewel of her comeback to date. I, I can't remember the last time I ate, but then other things are just so clear, you know, like they already happened and I'm doing them again. I think I'm dead. Number 8. Joaquin Phoenix Only someone with the last name Phoenix can rise from the ashes not once, but twice. Well, I was just thinking, m maybe I could stay with Dad for a while. In 1989, Joaquin Phoenix, then credited as Leaf, retired from acting, despite his success as a child star. Then, in 1995, two years after the death of his brother River Phoenix, Joaquin finally returned to the screen. By the early 2000s, he was a massive star. Ambition. That can be a virtue when it drives us to excel. The second half of the decade, however, saw his behavior become increasingly erratic, and in 2008, he announced his retirement from acting. Turns out it was all for a mockumentary, I'm Still Here, but the damage he did was real. Do your past failures bother you? No. Do your past failures bother you? No. Thankfully, filmmakers recognized his enduring talent, and his post-hiatus career has been defined almost exclusively by critically acclaimed performances and an Oscar. Number 7. Michael Keaton He was Beetlejuice. He was Batman. But by the early 2000s, he was essentially nowhere to be seen. Hold on. Michael Keaton never technically stopped working, it just seemed like no one was offering him big roles anymore. The critics continued to commend his performances, but nothing he did generated much interest at the box office. How could you lie to me, Maggie? Dad, I can explain, okay? Your word used to mean something. It's like Hollywood didn't know what to do with middle-aged Michael Keaton until he aged into a more believably world-weary age bracket. With 2014's Birdman, a film that was appropriately about an actor looking to make a comeback, he returned with a vengeance. You know my lines too, huh? Can we not get hung up on knowing lines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we yeah. just work on yeah, this, yeah. tear it apart? Right. The performance earned him an Oscar nomination. And roles in Spotlight, The Founder, and Spider-Man Homecoming soon followed. Number 6. Keanu Reeves 
Neffen says my career just got a new lease on life, like having your name combined with the term renaissance. LAPD, there's a bomb on your bus! In the 90s, Keanu Reeves proved himself an unlikely action star who, understated acting style aside, is surprisingly versatile. Point Break and Speed made him successful before The Matrix launched him into the stratosphere. Boy, this is fighting Neo. Unfortunately, there's only one place to go from there, and the 2000s saw his star dulled by forgettable films. But highs and lows, he always remained likable, relatable, and down to earth. And in the 2010s, he's finally got the sort of adoration he always deserved. The John Wick franchise, a fourth Matrix movie, his epic role in Always Be My Maybe, Wherever you look, there's Keanu giving us a reason to smile. Good seeing you again, John. Perkins. Number 5. Mariah Carey Every year, new artists make their presence known with hugely successful debut albums. But how many artists can you name who can make waves this big with their 10th studio album? The world is quick to get bored with the same old pop stars. By the mid-aughts, Mariah Carey's heyday felt like it was squarely in the rearview mirror. Yeah, but you know what? I'm having a good time, so... Hell no. With her 2005 album The Emancipation of Mimi, however, she made herself feel relevant, and in a way that would carry her forward for years to come. The beginning of the decade saw the singer-songwriter struggling on all fronts, professionally, personally, financially, and with her health. Glitter could have been the end, but she persevered and pulled off one of the most massive comebacks in music history. Number 4. Britney Spears One of the biggest stars of the late 90s pop music scene, Britney Spears was unstoppable with her releases of hit song after hit song. In fact, her first single is one of the best-selling tunes of all time. She even dominated the Super Bowl halftime show in 2001. Then, about halfway through the noughties, things started to go awry. Suffering from a mental breakdown, she became fodder for the tabloids, her record sales dipped, and she ended up in rehab. You have to realize that we're people and that we need to, we just need privacy and we need our respect. And, and those are things that you have to have as a human. She made a small comeback in 2007 with her Blackout album, but personal issues troubled her again until 2008's Womanizer and its parent record, Circus. By 2012, she had again taken the record world by storm, with Forbes naming her the year's highest paid female musician, an honor she hadn't attained in a decade. Number 3. Neil Patrick Harris Excuse me. Excuse me. I, Ted Mosby, am a jerk to women. For many years, most people didn't know the name Neil Patrick Harris. If he popped up on our screens, the only name we thought of was Doogie Howser the teenage Dr. Harris played early in his career. You're gonna kill him, Douglas, and you don't give a crap! Dr. Hauser, you will behave. Don't talk to me like you're my father! You're not! Harris seemed to fade away after the show came to an end. That is, until he appeared in the Harold and Kumar series as a self-aware version of himself. So, uh, so I gotta ask you, Neil, uh, did you ever get it on with Wando off the set? Dude, I humped every piece of ass ever on that show. Taking that momentum to move on and star in How I Met Your Mother, Harris became the show's breakout star. You're the one for me. He's since kept the momentum going with award show hosting gigs, high profile movie roles, a Netflix series, and his critically acclaimed stage work. And as anyone in the theater knows, after a grand entrance, the audience is supposed to applaud. Number 2. Matthew McConaughey We love the Keanu sauce, but the McConaughey sauce happened first, and was arguably even bigger. Looking back now, it's almost hard to remember what McConaughey's career used to look like. What if I take you to a restaurant? Are you going to pretend to own it? No. All the restaurants I own are in Europe. For those of you who need a refresher, it was almost exclusively rom-coms. And that's a genre you sadly tend to age out of eventually. By the 2000s, they all just started to blur together. Then suddenly, McConaughey just stopped saying yes to the rom-coms. Look at me. What do you see? Huh? The goddamn rodeo is what you see. Laying the groundwork with The Lincoln Lawyer and Mud, McConaughey blew audiences away in 2013 with Dallas Buyers Club, earning himself an Academy Award in the process. Stop it! No. No! 
doesn't matter. There's a 50 50 chance you're gonna kill yourself. Those are the best shots I've had in years. He followed it up with True Detective and Interstellar, among other notable roles, and in doing so, fundamentally altered and saved his career. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Robin Wright. She largely disappeared after Forrest Gump, but returned with House of Cards. This affects me too, Francis. And it's not the money I'm upset about. It's that we do things together. When you don't involve me, we're in free fall. I should have called you, and I didn't. Shania Twain. After retiring in 2004, she returned with a 2011 Vegas residency and a new album in 2017. Ed O'Neill. After married with children, we saw little of the actor. That is, until Modern Family. You fall in love with a baby with the cutest little fat folds, and then, bam, they're gone. But it's okay, because in its place is this toddler with the greatest laugh on earth. Mandy Moore. This one-time teen idol returned to the spotlight with Tangled and This Is Us. I'm sorry for anything I'm going to say in the next two hours. I mean none of it. You're going to mean some of it. <laughs> Very little of it. Paula Abdul, a pop star who was all but forgotten before becoming a judge on American Idol. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Robert Downey Jr. Today I'm going to jump up and down for you like nothing what you've ever seen before, but the vodka means can the chicken kip. When he started out, Robert Downey Jr. was heralded as one of the best actors of his generation. His Oscar-nominated role in Chaplin and arresting performance in Natural Born Killers demonstrated his impressive range. I mean, do you have any idea how huge we could be? <laughs> Let's make a little music, Colorado. Why, 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 why? But the actor's well-publicized drug problems made him too risky for producers, and his star faded in the 90s. Drugs land the troubled actor in prison. Eventually overcoming his demons, Downey pulled off a historic comeback in the 2000s, reminding everyone of his versatility and skill with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Zodiac, and Tropic Thunder. It's high science, man. It's art form. Yeah, you an artist. Mm. His performance as Tony Stark slash Iron Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe has solidified him as an icon of the big screen. Let's bring it up to 2.5. 3, 2, 1. Having gone from such an extreme low to the monumental fame he enjoys today, Robert Downey Jr. earns his spot. I can't but agree. My mind rebels at stagnation. Give me problems, give me work. The sooner the better. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.